this time on back shed my 1974 hq holden wagon is back this episode we're putting it back on the road so stop talking and get into it so if you haven't seen the hq wagon before this is the one from the wrecking yard episode we dragged it home got it running put some 17 inch ss Krager old school wheels on it lowered it down and then two pack clear coated it for a gloss patina finish this episode we're going to take it genuinely from the wrecking yard back onto the road so we're going for a rego inspection we've got a few things to do First job we're going to do this episode, it's actually cosmetic. I think this thing came up that good. I actually wanted to go a little bit further inside. So we had him all back together, but I started tearing him down again. Normally I just run with what we've got, but these ones were pretty bad. Ripped all down the middle. Anyway. We'll stop talking, I'll get him out where we can work on him, pop the doors open, and we'll get these new trims in. So that's the door trims in and the other thing I did was retrim the back panel this is the back panel that goes over the spare tire in the rear of the wagon and yeah I said retrim but I used the old vinyl the timber was rotted away and I just used the original vinyl and repainted the strips and yeah I know what you're thinking why'd you use the old vinyl well let me show you so if I put new vinyl over that and then chuck it back in here it's going to be up against all of that nothing's going to look the same at least using the old vinyl i put it back in with a new board and it still looks original shitty but original and that's where you got to draw the line get it running and driving don't worry about the little things we've all seen that project whether it be yourself that did it or a mate that's done it I'll just do that and i'll just retrim that and then oh, i may as well do that i may as well do that and eventually you don't have a car anymore you've got a pile of parts in the corner of the shed you got your head in your hands and you're questioning your own existence so right now i want this registered on the road by the end of the week and so little things like that i'm not concerned with remember in the last episode we did get it running and driving but the fuel tank I'm using at the minute is just a, a drink bottle at the front of the car 
if you remember we tidied up the carburetor rebuilt the fuel pump but there's my fuel tank there so the next thing we're going to do is get him back on the hoist get that bottle out of there and see what his fuel tank's like in the last video with the Corolla uh, we used a bore scope to check the inside of the fuel tank but this one's pretty easy to get out and I want to check the fuel gauge sender unit as well and to check them properly I really have to manipulate it up and down but we'll get to that for now get him up and we'll get this tank out so why I say these are not difficult to get out there's literally only two straps holding them in there's a nut there and another one up there behind the exhaust and all the lines you can actually take them off here at the rubber as bad as that is and leave all the lines in the car and then the filler neck there's also a rubber there so if we can get that rubber to slide up we can leave this section knock these guys off here maybe even repla replace those rubbers and leave all this guy in place here as well and then just drop the tank but there's plenty of nasty up here that looks like I built up a tar and dirt and shit up there. So, and we might address that while we're under here. Alright, so we'll stop talking, we'll get that tank on the ground. one of those moments where you go, I am glad I dropped the tank. That's probably the worst result I could have hoped for because that feels full. When I went to put it down, I was expecting old fuel to slosh everywhere, but there's nothing sloshing. It feels like it's full of dirt, which will probably mean it's full of rust. But on the outside, it looks pretty good. Except for the crud and shit, but... I'll pressure clean the outside. Um, and see where we end up look at the build up here i actually struggled to get the sender unit unplugged it ended up just falling and unplugging itself but um i don't know where that's it looks like tar but the real worrying concern is have a listen to this i don't know if you can hear it but That's the sound of my soul dying. Anyway, let's get into it. So I think the plan's gonna have to be, I was gonna wash it down, but actually I might try and get it out dry. So I'm gonna chip all this away and see if I can get that sender unit out and then try and tip some of the dirt or rust or whatever it is that's, that's in there out of that hole because those necks actually extend into the tank so they don't just tip out it won't just all come out that that filler so if i can get this guy out that'll be a good start so we'll chip away at this first so at this point I wouldn't say it's going great which that's not really a drama I can order one of them but I haven't seen a wagon fuel tank reproduction brand new fuel tank anywhere so I'm really gonna have to try and more or less save this one I've already found one hole strangely it's in the top but maybe the fuel is stopping it from rusting at the bottom I don't know I'd be happy if I can get away with one, one hole because I could patch that and weld a little, weld a little patch around that. But I'm not holding much hope when 
when that's the amount of rust that's coming out. That's a lot. So we'll see where we end up. What I'm going to do now is I flush the tank out. Basically just ran water through that until I got all the large chunks out. And you can see in there now it's still not great. I'll pressure clean this down um, on the rocks because I don't want to kill my amazing lawn with this filth here. And we'll see where we end up. So I've cleaned up the top to the best of my ability and I've came up with one hole there, there, and a, there, there, and also I think that one's coming through as well. So you may as well say I'm going to have to put a strip down there, a patch over that one, a big patch over that one, and then and then maybe, maybe I can dent that one a bit closer and not patch it, just zap it. But it'll be thin around it, so I might have to clean up that a little better too. But there's no use me spending a couple of hours welding that if the bottom isn't any good. I haven't hit it with a wire wheel. What I'm actually going to do is in through the sender hole, I'm actually going to tip hydrochloric acid and water mixed 50-50. It's just regular old acid you'd put in your swimming pool or something like that. Mix 50-50 as I said. And I'm just going to tip it in there. What it will actually do, it starts to dissolve the rust. And as it dissolves the rust, it becomes part of the liquid. And then you can just tip it and get most of it out. So I'll put that in through the sender hole. What I actually need a bit more. So it's basically clear when you're tipping it in. So that goes in clear, but as I said, it dissolves the rust, um, basically turns it to part of the liquid. So when you tip it out, you bring the rust with you and it will come out like a brownie yellow color. Just don't get it on yourself. So if I can get you in there without getting my head in the way, if you see in there it's already starting to clean up. And you can see the liquid's already starting to go a bit yellow. But all of a sudden the bottom of the tank doesn't look rusty and brown. And you can see the particles floating around in there. That's what we're after. And then we'll just flush that out with water later. But while that's soaking, let's get into some other stuff. So the one thing I want to do while that tank is soaking is sort out this exhaust. If you can see, that's snapped off there and that's why it's hanging down. And it's got a hole there. Clearly that's hit the diff at some stage as well. With a hole there. But there's a whole heap of other shit going on here. That's been sort of cobbled together. That's leaking around there. And that's all been squashed. And by the look of that, and that, to me, they look like forklift tines. I would say at one stage when this was in the wrecking yard, it's been picked up and squashed there and that hard up against the floor. Now, I don't want to go putting a full exhaust on this thing because let's face it, I doubt this six cylinder will stay in it. It's probably going to end up with something a little more aggressive, maybe a, a later model V8 or something like that. And so I'm going to patch up this exhaust um, just to get it through Rego and all that has to do is not leak and not hit anything. So what I reckon I'll do from there forward, I'll ignore, I'm going to cut it off right there. 
um, take this section out get it on the floor and we'll just patch up that hole there and maybe fix that join there maybe a new piece of pipe in that join and sort that bracket out so that this all comes back down a little So that little beauty there is as sketchy as crap, got holes there, and it gets better on this side. But I'm probably going to do something just as sketchy. I'm going to take that bracket off, I'll need that, maybe cut that off there. And then just patch this guy up somehow, I'll clean him up and see what goes. Now I've got my settings on the welder turned down below one mil one mil with 0.9 wire which is what i've got in it should be 4.5 volts so it should be 15 volts the 4.5 wire speed well i've actually got this turned down to 13 volts and 3.5 wire speed because this is as thin as hell i'm going to get my little patch and just patch that up just like just like that that's right i'm going to patch them up same with there. What's wrong with that? A lot is what's wrong with that. But anyway, I'm doing it. I can see a bigger future for this thing with a different engine, so this will just get us through Rego. So that's my little patches and I took ownership, I even signed that one. Sure, they're ugly, but like I say, not leaking is a pass. We'll get that little gem back up in there and all I'm going to do with this piece is just mimic that bend in a fresh piece of pipe, just mark him and cut him off there and there. So that's all in there now, my little patches, and this section here, and you can see how much different that size pipe is to that, but I just filled the edge, you know, just ran a weld around it, it'll be fine, it doesn't leak, space it down from the floor, that's good enough. I think it's time we can get the acid out of this tank, so we'll get that out, see what that's come up like. You see when I tip this out, it'll be quite yellow then. And yes, I'm tipping it into a bin. That way some rags and shit will soak it up and it'll evaporate. And I won't have to deal with it. So with all the acid out of him, I'm now just running the hose in there just to flush any of the acid out and don't do it on your grass because it'll it'll kill your grass. So 
and just give it a good flux we'll see if we can get these to these to unblock and you can see the holes there there on there Anyway, I'll give that a good flush out. So that's the exhaust done and the fuel tank's draining and those little holes became instrumental to getting all the water out of that fuel tank. But before I start repairing the holes and that sort of thing, I think I want to drop this guy down off the hoist and clean under here. Where the tank was, it's filthy. Um, I may as well drop it down, pressure clean it. And also there's a bit of an oil leak at the front. I wouldn't mind pressure cleaning that again and seeing where that oil's coming from. Now, as I say, up front here, there's a bit of an oil leak. And at first glance, you go, oh, well, it's back here. It's going to be a rear main, but it's actually, it's all wet up here as well. So I'm wondering if it's sort of traveling back, but it, I can't tell. I'm going to have to degrease all this area again. All the rest we've already pressure cleaned. It's come up really good. I'll clean where that tank was. Give up here another degrees and give this another wash down. And we'll see if we can't sort out that leak as well. Jeez, I reckon that that belt's just about to say see you later. Anyway, we'll stop dicking about, we'll get him down off the hoist. So she's back in the shed and while she's drying off, we'll get stuck into this tank. I just got some panel steel. I'm going to clean that steel up and just start cutting some little patches. That one I might even try and dent the corner in see if I can get that one. But we'll just put a couple little patches over here and here. And there's also one long one that's going to be along here. There's a little few pinholes there. But we'll see if we can't resurrect this tank. It won't be perfect. I might even have to pull some sort of resin or something over the top just as a secondary barrier to try and seal him up. But for now, I'll weld these patches in. I'm not going to cut them out and butt them. I'm actually going to go over the top. I think I've got a better chance of just welding around the, the edge of the patch and just cover the hole rather than actually cut it out and try and butt it up flush. So there's my little patches, they're not perfect, but they'll do, I just had to spot weld around, I, I blew a couple of holes and then you just go wider and wider. And I ended up having to pretty much reconstruct that corner and put a patch right out. It was the worst one, it was the thinnest and kept blowing a hole, that was the one I was going to tap, try and dent together and anyway, it is what it is. And I'm going to do a bit of Googling tonight and see if there's a repair um, filler or something like that that I could actually pull over them just as a secondary measure to make sure that we're not, um, we're not going to leak. We're blowing smoke rings here. Anyway, that's that for now. So that's probably it for today. The tank did take a little bit longer than I probably would have liked but you know it is what it is I'll do some googling like I said tonight to see if if there's something I can pull over the hole repair I don't mean like a little bit of JB weld where you push it into the hole I don't want to fill this full of fuel find there's a pinhole and then put a little bit of something in it I actually want to cover the hole repairs so I'll see if there's something along those lines failing that I'll stick it in and just see how it goes it's two minutes to take it back out as far as the sender unit i'll get one of them ordered that isn't looking like that's salvageable and there's two types of senders with the hqs there's 
a thermal and a magnetic. Um, and you've got to have the right one because they actually work in reverse. If you put the wrong one in, it's going to say full when it's empty and empty when it's full. The simplest way I've heard to tell is with the magnetic, the earth strap will go to the top of whatever that is there, the thingy. And with the thermal, it will be attached to the bottom of the thingy. So this one's obviously a thermal. I'll get that ordered tonight. And of course we got it washed down so that's ready we can black underneath before the tank goes back in. Oh and also the exhaust is done. So first thing in the morning I've got a bit of an unusual one. In the first video when I put the lowered springs in the rear of this one I was looking at one of the control arms and it's actually bent. So that's the first thing we're doing in the morning is getting that control arm out and trying to press it back into shape. When I first saw it I couldn't understand it's not bent up like I've driven over something actually bent out from from the inside of the car out on the driver's side and it wasn't until we're under there doing the exhaust today that the penny dropped of how it's actually been bent if you saw the flat section on the exhaust that's forklift tines you can clearly see the tine going in and slide out you can see the marks on the exhaust well that bent control arm is the nose of the forklift tine they've had it too high when they've went under if you remember this spent a lot of time in the, at a wrecking yard, so I'd say at one stage, instead of trying to tow it or push it, they picked it up with a forklift, maybe had the tines a little high and just jammed it into that control arm. Anyway, I'll get that pressed out in the morning. Um, then we'll get back up front, find out what that oil leak is, and we're getting there. Ben's lights and bulbs, but anyway, I'll see you in the morning. So the control arm I'm talking about is this lower guy. And if you look at him, he's got a fair bend in him that side, and even more so on this side. He's relatively easy to get out. Just going to knock the bolt out of here and the bolt out of the front. And everything else will hold him in place. The shock and the top control arm will hold the diff in place. So we'll knock these two out, get him out, and see what we can't do with him. I haven't really figured out how I'm going to straighten that up yet. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to give this bit a bit of a twist in before I actually take him off the car so that the mounting points will kind of support him. Let's see if we can't give that a bit of a bend. There we go. Fixed. Maybe I won't get him out. Maybe we'll just have a couple more goes of that. It's not really this piece here. I'll bring in a bit closer. So now that this horrible bit isn't hanging out here, it actually looks pretty straight to there. And then it kicks, kicks out. So I'm wondering if I can just get on the end of that, pull that across and then do the same there. I'll just press pause on pulling him out for now and we'll just see if we can push that across first because the top of it along here doesn't actually look bent now see they've got a tape they taper in they're wider there and taper in there yeah see they they actually do taper in so i might be able to just pull this section out and this section in because the line down the top of that doesn't look bent I think it's just from there down we'll give him a crack see here we go yes yeah, so when you look at the arm um, in the in the channel if you will it doesn't look bent, it's only that skirt. So let's, let's have another crack at the old vice grips. Go on that way.
one more. One more go of that and I'm over it. <clears throat> I didn't really feel like pulling that out anyway. What's the saying? It ain't got to be pretty. Just got to run. Oh, that's fairly pretty. You know what? I'm going to call that fixed. It sort of has a taper in at both ends. Yeah, there's probably a little more I could do there. Anyway, I think I'm good with that. I might just give him a little bit more there and that front edge and that'll do him, I think. I don't know about you, that's good enough for me. So I probably picked up a bit of time by not pulling that out and that as I say that is good enough for me. That's pretty good. They're not they're not perfectly straight from factory if you think they've got a bit of a, a wider section here and narrows back out and then widens back out so and I only ordered that tank sender yesterday so that won't turn up today. I think that'll be tomorrow. So while he's on the hoist, we may as well start looking at painting underneath it. And I do get a ton of questions about preparing the underside of the car or what product do you use. But I've got to keep it really simple. Do you want a show car or do you want to just get it running and driving? And that's what I'm doing here. So as far as preparation goes, that's had 50 years of gravel roads. It's sandblasted underneath. There's not an ounce of shine. There's not an ounce of paint left and it's roughed up, ready to go. And as far as being washed down, that's now the third time I've pressure cleaned this guy. And I bought myself a bit of a new toy. Instead of struggling with this big guy, trying to get it up underneath the car, I bought me a little stumpy fella. And he's been pretty good. You can really jam it in up there and get it clean. So if it's roughed up, cleaned down, you're gonna get adhesion. And if you think about the products they would've used back in 1974, anything you can get now is going to be a better product so the one i'm using is nothing elaborate it's just a self etching underbody black with a mild rust inhibitor so even that little bit of surface rust doesn't worry me anything you put on that is going to be better than leaving it bare and that's what we're doing we're just going to get it driving it ain't got to be pretty it's just got to run so let's get into that that's black underneath so wheels are off and I've just masked a few little bits. I'm just going to go gently around here so I'm not going to bother masking the whole thing and I'm just going to put some tape around the wheel arches and that sort of thing. And to get my nice new springs out, you just have to lift them and they should come straight out like that. Like I said like that. Anyway, like that. That way I'm not having to mask them. So we'll just get under here. I'll put some more tape here and we'll just get under here and black everything, the exhaust and all the floor.
So when we're under the bonnet before, I did unearth a couple of other little issues. That hose clearly was one. I'm gonna we're gonna knock those hoses off and just try and flush the block out if there's any rusty shit in it. And also the radiator as well. I'm not gonna remove it, we're just gonna flush it as it sits there. But one other thing I did find, we come right back in here. I'll just pull that off out of the way. Because believe it or not, that's actually to go to the rocker cover. If you see there, that's a temp sender, and it's full of water, which means it's leaking like a sieve. And like I said, the other thing is that's actually for the brake booster, so we might run a new hose across here, so that one can go back up there where it belongs instead of there, just blocking a vacuum leak. And that should be just about us. So maybe a clamp for there. That's another thing I just thought of. So we'll get a temp sensor and a clamp tomorrow yeah. anyway we'll get into all this I'm just running him to get him warm um, just to stir up any rust and shit inside the block in the radiator and then we're going to flush it out like I said I've warmed him up, it just stirs all the rust and shit up and I'll flush this radiator without removing it and also just flush the block. It, it's Everything's working fine, I just want to get some of the rust and shit, there's clearly a lot of rust and stuff in it. Yeah that's quite hot but anyway, good one dickhead. You can see that it's, and the cap's got a lot of rust and shit around it so see if we can't get a bit of it out. And that temp sender I'll get in tomorrow. See if I can't knock it out now while I've got the water out of it. That water next seen better days, but yeah, whatever. I'll get you down here. I'd say there'll be a bit of rust coming out down here. Like, look at the colour of that. That's not great. I don't know if you can see in there, but that's, that's pretty shitty. So all we're going to do is literally just get the hose end, jam it in the radiator and flush it out at the top. Reason being, all the shit from the block, all the rust and crap from the block is returning through the top. So you'd like to think it's in the top of the tubes if there's any shit in there. Um, it's, yeah, it's not coming in from the bottom. It's actually leaving from the bottom of the radiator, coming in through the pump. So we'll try and flush the block um, back that way through the thermostat and down and then back this way and in through the bottom hose and try and come out through here and then block this one and come out through here, see what we can get out of it. So we'll see what we can get coming out here. It's actually not as bad as I thought. And then when I take the hose out, hopefully anything else come rushing out there.
enough for me. Just gonna get some coarse sandpaper and go around that filler neck. That's pretty ordinary, really. And the water pump neck as well. I'll just clean them up while I got the chance. sensor out temp sender out from the sensor um, oh, and might have to write myself a list I'm gonna forget something for sure so I got the temp sender out from that side of the head um, it didn't really even pose that much of a problem so I add that to the list but if they don't have one I think what I'll do is just put a bolt in the end of that and weld it up um, and plug it because obviously that's not going to make it fail a safety inspection that's just for your warning light yeah so if ordering one's going to take too long I might do that but one of the other jobs I want to do is run some new hose from the uh, from a vacuum port on the manifold across to the brake booster and I've kind of been putting this one off it's one of those ones where you, you don't want it to be bad um, because of the the popularity of restos and, and the value of Monaros and that sort of thing these days, they're really expensive to rebuild. And to tell if they need to be rebuilt, you generally just suck on the pipe. If it doesn't build any pressure, the diaphragm is split. If it builds pressure, then the diaphragm should be all right. Well, this one, I don't know. It's, it seems to be building pressure, but it seems to take too long to build pressure. So I guess I'm just going to put a pipe across there and, and wing it and see what happens. But generally, if they have got a tiny, bit, but generally if they have got a tiny little split in the diaphragm, you'd be able to tell pretty soon because when you press the brake and the diaphragm extends, the split will open, and then as you let the brake off, it'll close. And what that'll do is it'll change the idle of the car um, as you depress the brake it creates a vacuum leak so it idles up so you can actually more or less hear that it's that it's not working anyway i'll get a new pipe we'll get that done as well add that to the list so so far on my little list i've got battery clamp 516 fuel line and that was for the fuel tank to go from the little breather lines to the tank the temp sensor sender temp sender radiator cap and the vacuum booster lines oh and maybe some bulbs um I'll go around and check i might check some bulbs and just see if we need any of them actually you know what i'm not going to be able to sleep unless i know if that booster works so screw that um i'll go get some hot water even if I've got to use that fuel line, I'll cram it on there. Let's do it now. I'll do it now. So, I found some old fuel line. No, it's not. I found some old transmission line, because it says so. Um, and I've just got some boiling hot water. It's a little bit small, so I'm going to have to really get right in there and jam this in there. But if I can get it on... Um, we'll test if this is any good. Oh, pissed it in. Just like that, there you go. That wasn't even hard. That hose is definitely too small, so I thought that was going to be an absolute pain in the ass, but turns out it wasn't. Oh. 
And now this goes across to the intake manifold where I had that pipe before, which actually is a rocket cover vent. There. And so I need about, about there. There's the puddles. Transmission line still oil resistant, so I can't see why why that would work. And again, I'll heat him up and just jam it on. Just see if we can't butcher it up now rather than waiting tomorrow. Although that's not really butchered, that's brand new hose. That is a pretty big fitting though, I'm gonna try and jam that over. If I get it over it, it won't need a clamp. Just come on, get on there. Get around this other side and give it a yank. I know, I don't know what to do. I'll heat him back up and I'll get the old redneck flaring tool. We'll go again. The old redneck flaring tool. You can use pretty much anything. It's an old sharpie. I'll just cram it up the butt, stretch it, wait for a little while. Whack her on. That easy. <laughs> See how that goes. I'll just let that let that do its thing for a second. Um, maybe stretch it up. And if I can get that on. We can then fire. It's a bit of a burr on the end of that. Series now. Uh, why would you have that one bigger than that one? That was a stretch. This one's just it's ridiculous. Cross some um, cross brake booster vacuum line off that list for you. So I've probably made that as hard as I possibly could on myself by using transmission line instead of a vacuum line. It probably expands a bit better, but that guy was substantially larger than that fella. So getting him on there was quite difficult. And as I say, that's just a vacuum line from the manifold that produces your vacuum for your brake booster. Truth, we'll jump on this brake. I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing that pedal grunt, but that's about it. I'll be bugged, we might have. I don't know how well we can hear. 
hear that, but I can't hear a change. I'll show you what I mean. So with the engine running, if you create a vacuum leak, it'll do one of two things. It'll run really rough, um, where it's, it's way too lean, or it'll idle up. So I'll try and show you what I mean. This what I mean. And I won't run that for too long because if you remember, we have no water. But you get the idea. When I'm unplugging um, the vacuum line, it idles itself up. So there's two things at play here. Either one, the vacuum leak it's creating is not big enough to change the idle, or two, it's gonna be okay. As I said, I sucked on it. It felt like it took a little too long to build pressure, but it's, it's absolutely building pressure there now. So I'm gonna call that good for now and cross it off the list. And the other couple of things I thought I might check is a few lights and bulbs and things. So we'll put lights on. Well, lights definitely work. Let's see if we've got high beam. Low, high. Tail lights? I'll be buggered, we've got tail lights. Two from two so far. We'll go back to Parker's. So that should just be park lights. Oh, I'm running hot. Oh, okay, uh, we've got one Parker out. That's not bad. What about indicators? But nothing. Oh, turn it on, dickhead. Ooh. That one works, you can see the reflection. Oh, even the side one's going. Oh yes, I can see that one's working too. Oh, what's going on here? going on but hang on this might just be the switch because I'm well we'll see if it's on anyway I will I'll bet you when I fix that, it'll start blinking properly inside the cab. I wouldn't mind betting that starts ticking properly. Hang on, we've got no indicator again now. What's going on now? I've got no right one. And it's back. Switch is probably a bit stiff from not being used for so many years. And wipers, oh yeah. So electric wise, we're going pretty good. So that's not bad. Right hand parker, left hand indicator. pretty good result we got the indicator working it was just a bulb and the parker on that side it's just a bulb as well but i don't have one of them i reckon that's it for the day it's beer time and the list is getting smaller we've only got battery clamp the temp sender the tank sender that we're still waiting on but i only ordered that yesterday and radiator cap oh and of course the bulb for the parker so I can definitely have this 
buttoned up as of tomorrow, but we're waiting on the tank sender. And I'm talking about the fuel gauge sender. Um, we'll get that back in and I think that's it. I think it's rego time. And that's the whole point of this one is, I wanna drive this one to work. I'm gonna have a little love affair with this one for a few months. And yeah, I know, talking about engine swaps and that sort of thing, but realistically, I think I'm gonna have a love affair with this thing for a little while, just the way it is. It's taken 50 years to try and kill that motor and it still can't kill it. So I reckon there's still some life left in it. I'll keep driving it, but that's it for today. Up early in the morning, I'll zip in, we'll get a few bits and pieces and hopefully that fuel sender turns up. If that turns up, that'll make my day Get on the phone, get a book in. Hell, we might have Rego by the time I go back to work in two days. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. So up early this morning and I've got a couple of hours before the parts store actually opens. So last night I painted one side of the fuel tank, so we'll flip him over, get some colour on that. And while that's drying, we'll zip in and, and grab some bits and pieces. Now I'm not using anything elaborate. This is just some... It's actually an industrial coating, just a silver. I think it was left over from when we rebuilt the trailer in episode 18. If you haven't seen episode 18, do go back. It's a Wrecking Yard video. It's where that wagon came from. So we got our battery clamp, our radiator cap, and I've just left that loose to remind me to actually put some water in that or some coolant the only thing they didn't have was our temp sensor which i metal maxed in the end of that and i'll just bung it in and i've ordered it so when that turns up i'll refit him but for now that guy can go back in but the real good news is when i got home fuel tank sender the post he'd been dropped him off so let's chuck him in and get that tank in so the sun's decided to come out and the tank's definitely dry enough and I wanted to go back to these guys. I actually found some solvent resistant fiberglass matting or filler if you'd like that's designed for repairing hulls of boats. It said solvent resistant so I thought I'd try it and let's face it I've just gone over my welds so if the welds are good that'll never be exposed to fuel but I just wanted to do it as a secondary measure. So with the sender in, and there's a seal behind that, a big rubber o-ring, and that's your locking ring. That just slips over, and the end of the tab goes under these tabs. So if you can just get all of them under, there's one more there. And I made a special tool, and by special tool I mean a sacrificial screwdriver that I've blunted off. And then just tap your locking ring in. Once those back tabs are up against the bracket there, that's locked in. We'll get that wiring connector cleaned up and she's ready to go back in. neck rubber on and I got him on my trans jack just to help me go up because I need to get it pretty close then connect up all the hoses and fittings and wiring and all the rest of it he even gave me a gasket for the filler spout anyway getting close I'm getting I'm getting pumped we're getting close
So you know what really pisses me up the wall? It's when you order specific parts labeled or listed for a specific car and parts arrive and they don't fit. Oh, it fits. It pulls straight back off. And I've tried the EH and one off the EK and they're not quite right, actually. You know the one I haven't tried? Maybe just try the one off the HQ you've got sitting right next to you, you moron. Like that one there. Thanks, mucus. Okay, now I'm, now I'm just plain confused. That's the same cap as that. It's even got the same part number on it. It doesn't fit. Maybe that's bent. Maybe that's bent. That, that could be bent. Maybe somebody tried to pull the old locking cap off it and has bent it. And that's why it's just not grabbing because that's the same cap. I'll try both of these on mucus and if they fit, I'm gonna try and manipulate that to, so the cap stays clipped in. It's like the little tags here, here. They're just not grabbing behind the fuel neck. It's if they need to be wider. Anyway, I'll check them on mucus. If they both work on mucus, I'll bend that. Well, kind of glad I didn't shit on the manufacturer and whatever because both of them fit mucus. So that's the issue there. Okay, I'm not pissed anymore. So no luck. Pulled the, the lip in. The cap is just literally too small. So I run a vernier over this one. And why does it fit mucus? So I run a vernier over mucus. They're actually different. Six mils different. The tank in the sedan was 35 mils, the opening, which gave it enough for these tabs to grab. That is almost 41 because I've played with the edge. Let's say 40 mils. There's a good, there's five, maybe six mils difference. Can anyone explain that? Wagon, sedan. The sedan's a 72, this is a 74, but you wouldn't have thought they'd change. Anyway, six mils is six mils. I'll back to the drawing board. If I can't keep fuel in it, I, I can't pass red, Joe. So let's go for another drive. You wouldn't think such a small detail would pull me up and I will I will get my ass into gear and get in there. But I just sort of keep trying different caps to see if I can get one to fit. And the XE wagon fits, but the surround is way too wide. The difference in the body is exactly that. The body of that guy's 35 mil and the and mucus filler neck was 35 mil. So that's gonna fit a sedan. And incidentally, the VB Commodore is the same but the Commodore doesn't have a cap, so I can't just steal it for the minute. And the body of that guy is 40 mil, so I just need a cap that fits a 40 millimeter filler neck. Simple. But I will stop bitching and go and get one. So I got the right cap and it fits spot on. The ironic bit is that cap is listed at not fitting this car, 72 sedan, 35 mil neck, 74 wagon, 40 mil, 41 mil neck, somewhere there. I wouldn't have thought that'd be different, but they are. Anyway, stop talking, we'll get some fuel in it. So I know he's got a brand new sender in him, but we'll see if he moves, so I'll roll the key on. Because it's not uncommon for gauges that have been sitting for a long, long time still to be a little stuck and oh geez that's 20 liters it should be quarter of a tank ish but if i get you in a bit closer that's definitely moved and if i turn the key off the gap between the needle and that first stroke is definitely widening so it's it's working but like i say sometimes they can be a bit stuck 
I'll completely ignore that and we'll just start driving it. I'll go and fill it up. Maybe that'll that'll wake it up, you know, having to move the whole way across. But yeah, we'll ignore that and we'll just start driving it. Well, I said that temp sender was the last thing. No, I actually forgot we've buttoned up the back fuel system. But I haven't actually joined it to the pump yet. So I'm still running off that little bottle. I'll get this off. Remind me next time I go to the parts store, grab some more hose clamps. I'm running out of hose clamps. Now, I did blow compressed air through the line. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you or not. Anyway, I did it. And that was just when the tank was out. And you could hear the air up the front, but I've forgotten whether we did that or not. So I'll just mention that we did. And I might just quickly fire that and just see that we get fuel into that filter. Try not to freak out too much about me running it without water because it's still got water up to the temperature sender level in the block. And to be honest, you'd have to run it for a fairly long time before you started to, you know, heat it up to the point where you're gonna do damage. And that was only, I don't know, go back and have a look. Was it a minute? Either way, I've done, I've done a lot worse. So I'll just screw this guy up, my amazing big ass spanner. I'll chuck a bit of water in him and hopefully I'll get a text back by then and we'll know when we get to, get to get him inspected. Hopefully that fuel gauge will wake up. Right, last thing. Oh, I tell you what it does need. A fan belt. Remember that fan belt was absolutely shit house. Might get one on the way in. Because it's terrible. Like, like really terrible. Actually, if I don't get a message back, <laughs> I might zip back into the parts store. I suck at this today. And maybe grab a fan belt. I'm going to start writing myself better lists. Shit memory. So when I went to start it to move it out, if you roll the key on and turn it, nothing. But I've got my knee under that column. If I lift that steering wheel with my knee, away she goes. So nothing there. Lift it with your knee. And also the park lever is a little bit temperamental at times. You've got to wiggle it around. But I'll show you what's doing that. If you look down here, you'll see the gap moves. So there's something going on with this column as far as it's not, not tight or something in those, those bolts. But one of the other things it can be is there's a rod that runs from the back of the ignition down the top of the column and into an adjustable switch. The switch can be adjusted forward or back. That can be the other thing, and it can be the moving of the column is actually forcing it into the switch a little harder, and that's what's switching on. But I'll drop the column and show you the switch I'm talking about. So there's three bolts. I can tell you one's, oh, none of them are tight. That's finger tight. Yeah, none of them are tight. But I'll drop this column. I'll take a look at this switch. It's Yeah, have a look up here, I'll show you this switch. You can see there's the rod there, and there's the switch there. And you see on this side of the switch, there's two adjusters. There's two little screws there, and then if you back them off, and ever so slightly move it back this way, that rod will engage sooner. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna put those bolts back in tight, because they one was 
barely in there two were finger tight so they've had the column down for some reason anyway i'll adjust them first so i'll just crack them never so slightly bring them back up like that you can see he's moved probably four mils doing back up now we'll pop this column back up Just nine sixteenths. Work them back up there. I wonder why they had that column down. That switch didn't look like it had been replaced or anything. So no more wiggle in the column. Beautiful. Nah. That's all it was. So just that that switch had to be brought back so the rod was engaging. And then just do the column up. That was hadn't really driven it enough to worry about it. But yeah, anyway, that's done now. I know I've said it a few times, but I think that's the last of it. So that's it for today. It's definitely beer time. It's probably past beer time actually, but all those little things add up time-wise, and I guess I did a bit of running around. I wasn't expecting that. Um, fuel cap issue and it's those little things that do soak up the time that was a full day feeling like I didn't achieve anything really but we got a few things done that from the condition it came this has come a long way they are so simple I have 100% confidence in this thing short of catastrophic failure I think it's going great wish I didn't say that because now it probably will have a catastrophic failure. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. So we got the tick inspection done. We've now got red J plates. So let's do the last thing we're gonna do and that is take for a good drive. This one is genuinely from the wrecking yard back to the road. How you play the game with the people that write in the rules? Ain't the fame that I'm after when paying the dues. I've been through the pain that's reflected in the attitude. Might be winning now, but the thing is that I had to lose. Who's going to tell me what you really want to do? And lonely at the top, cause there ain't a lot of room. Ain't no other option, it's all I ever knew. So I'ma get it popping, you know how I'ma do. I've been down through the blood and the sweat. Guarantee you can know I'm a threat. I've been down through the blood and the sweat. And I ain't close to being done, yet I'm going on it.
jump. Ain't no love lost, we just really doing us. Go and take your seat, looking silly, getting up. Y'all know what it is, let me tell them what it was. It was 24-7 on the ground, one thing at a time. Hard to understand, kind of person got the state of mind. We was making moves every day, getting things in line. You could go and say what you want, but believe that I... I've been down through the blood and the sweat. Guarantee you can know I'm a threat. I've been down through the blood and the sweat And I ain't close to being done Yet I'm going on It has nothing on it Where'd that go? Let me see that one again Is that? Oh, I've got the lens cap on again God, I suck at that Probably can't hear what I'm saying. That was probably not very good. Because it says so. What all the difference is. Oh fuck. Is that on? Now, um, no. Why is it filming like that? Why is it side on? We'll stop. Get into this guy, for fuck's sake. Can you do that for me? Remind me. So that's it for another episode. Do hit the buttons, stick around. We've got some new cars coming shortly. But till then, thanks for watching. You could go and say what you want, but believe that I've been down through the blood and the sweat. Guarantee you can know I'm a threat.